Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. You're probably either here because you're mildly curious about how to reload the firmware in Acorn. Or you bricked your Acorn and you're here because you're desperately trying to find a way to get it back. Well, we're going to try and do this together. Um, some of the causes for bricking an Acorn, meaning it's just gone dead, you probably have no comp to it is interrupting, and this is the most common one, is when you load new software and the software communicates with Acorn, it flashes the firmware on Acorn's single board computer, which is called the Beagle Bone Green. It's a pretty neat board. It's all self-contained. Um, it runs its own operating system and it runs its own firmware that Centroid loads on it from the factory. So it's pretty important, extremely important, that when you load the Centroid software, you do the bench test properly, and at that point, when it's saying it's updating the software on the Acorn, is you let it go until it's finished. Uh, or you get some error message, times out, it reverts back to your desktop. At that point, if that occurs, then power down Acorn and power down your PC, power Acorn back up, power your PC back up, and try and start the CNC software again. The biggest clue that Acorn is working is the heartbeat light. And to the right of the Ethernet port is a blue light, and it'll blink at one pulse per second. When it's doing that, it means the software is loaded on the BeagleBone Green, and it's ready to go to work. So if you don't have that one pulse per second, then there's a good chance that you bricked your Acorn. You're going to need a few things before you get started. You're going to need a 5-volt DC power supply. I happen to have this one. It's a 5-volt DC power supply, and it has a micro USB connector on it. Okay, um, these little cubes work as long as you verify that they're 5 volts DC out. It has a USB port on it. You just need to have a standard USB connector on one side and a micro USB on the other. And it should work. The second thing you're going to need is a micro SD card. So if you can see this tiny little thing. At least a gigabyte. Okay. Then you're going to need a way to get the data from your Windows PC onto this thing. So in my case, I have one of these. It's a USB SD card reader writer. All right. The thing is on this one is it takes standard SD cards. Well, that's not a problem. I have an adapter, a micro SD card, and slide it into the adapter, push it in, and locked it in. Lock it in. Now we're going to take the card and put it in the USB reader, close the door. Now when I plug this into my Windows computer, it looks just like a USB memory stick. Okay? So that, we have this ready to go. Now let me get you down to Acorn and I want to show you how to carefully remove the BeagleBone Green from the Acorn motherboard. You want to do this very carefully because you don't want to bend any of the header pins on the Acorn motherboard. Uh, the other thing is if you have an anti-static strap, you probably want to do that. The other thing that you can do is touch something me metallic. Um, I still happen to have the power supply um, plugged in and it's grounded so all I got to do is touch the metal casing of the power supply to discharge any static that I might have. Last thing you want to do is zap something on the Beagle Bone Green while you're doing this operation. So try and discharge any static, and I'll show you that when we swing the camera around to the Acorn. Okay, here you see my power supply. This is from bench testing Acorn. I'm touching the power supply. It's still plugged in. It's obviously it's not powered up, but the ground, the chassis ground, is still going to the basically the wall socket. So I'm just touching it to discharge any static that I might have. Okay, so the next step now is we need to remove the BeagleBow Green from the Acorn motherboard. 
And you want to do this, I said very carefully, the, the best case scenario is for it to come straight up. And I realize that's pretty difficult because you have header pins on both sides of Acorn. So I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm going to get under the back side with my two fingers. I'm going to create a, a lever action here with my fingers. I'm going to pry up slightly and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to turn it and I'm going to get to the Ethernet socket side. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get under it and I'm going to try and gently pull it up. Now it's coming up. Now I'm going to turn it again and I'm going to pull on this side. And there it's it's about to pop off. So I'm going to grab it from the back and the front and try and wiggle it off. And there it is. I'm going to move the motherboard off to the side. And here is the BeagleBone Green. We have to familiarize ourselves with some buttons here. And the best way to hold the BeagleBone is from, its, from, the, from the corners, you know, touching the shell here, that's fine. You know, trying not to touch any of the components on either side of it, that's the best thing. But let's go over the buttons. They are labeled, and you generally don't have to fool with them. But down here by the Ethernet connector, there's a power button closest to the Ethernet connector, and then there's a reset button right here closest to the Ethernet connector. We won't concern ourselves with either of those buttons during this uh, exercise of reflashing BeagleBone. There is a button right here in the corner, and is opposite of the SD, of the SD card slot. It says User. That's the button we're going to need right there. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and insert my SD card reader into the PC. Okay, I'm going to go to this PC. It popped right up. Okay, so it's my USB drive D. As you can see, I have nothing on that card. So the important thing to note here is it's USB drive D. Let's close that. Now let's go to Centroid's website and get the files and software that we need. Going to go to centroidcnc.com. Search our site. Let's type dbricker. Okay, it's on the Acorn CNC controller quick start video page. We'll click that. And here are the instructions. So we're going to go to the download link. And I'm going to save it in my downloads. It's called Acorn BBGD Bricker. Save. Okay, it's saved. Close this. Use Windows Explorer. Go to Downloads. Here's Acorn BBG Debricker. I'm going to right click on it. Extract All. I'm going to browse to the desktop. So I'm, I'm going to put it on my desktop in a folder called Debricker. Okay, let's go to the desktop, and here it is. Let's open it up. Okay, reading the instructions, use an appropriate micro SD card. We have that, and uh, we made sure there was nothing on the SD card. That was number two. Number three, run the HP format utility. Ensure that the correct drive is selected for the SD card. If the wrong drive is selected, you will lose data. So here's the SB, here's the HP USB disk storage format tool. Double click. All right, if you get the permission denied, right click on it, run as administrator. Now this is very important. Ensure that FAT32 is selected and all the check boxes are not checked. So we have F 
FAT32, you can see that right here, and these boxes are not checked. We are in drive D. It says SDMMC card reader 1, 961 megabytes, drive D. That's important. If you have to change it, you change it here, but that's the only drive that I have, drive D. So we're going to start. Warning, all, all data on the SDMMC card reader 1, 0, will be lost. Drive D. Do you really want to proceed with the format? We say yes. Here it says formatting the device. Just be patient. Okay, now that our SD card is formatted with FAT32, once the SD card is finished formatting, move the files MLO and APP from the Files for SD Card folder onto the SD card. These should be the only files present. So let's go up to Files for SD Card. And there they are. So we left click on it one time. Now left click and hold, come down, and go to the USB. That's one. And remember, mine is USB D. Yours might be different. Left click on it one time. Left click on it, hold, drag it, USB D. Now let's open the USB drive, drive D, and see if they're there. And they are. It says USB drive D, and the two files are there. So let's close this. And now let's eject the drive. Uh, many of you already know how to do this, but just in case, click on the up arrow on your desktop, and then this little icon that looks like a USB thumb drive, click on it, and then click, see it says USB drive D, eject mass storage device, click on it. Now I can take it out, and I can pull the micro SD card out of the adapter, and we're ready to flash BeagleBone. So instructions say to take the SD card and insert it into the slot. So this is the top of the card. We rotate BeagleBone and we insert it into the slot. And we push it until it clicks and locks. Okay, it says firmly hold down the user button. That's this one next to this TAN connector right here in the corner. It is not these up here next to the Ethernet connector. It's this one right here in the corner. So firmly hold it down while inserting the micro USB cable into the micro USB connector to power BeagleBone green. Note the micro USB cable is connected to a powered USB connector on the other end such as a USB connector on a PC. In my case it's a wall wart, 5 volt DC wall wart. And then after I plug it in it says verify all four LEDs light up sequentially. Those are the LEDs right here so keep your eyes right here. Should take two to five seconds. Wait on until all four tiny LEDs come on then release the user button. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my USB cable. So what we're watching for right here. There, are, all four of them have come on. Wait a couple seconds. Verify all four LEDs light up sequentially. To, should take two to five seconds. Wait till all four tiny LEDs come on, then release the user button. Okay, I've released the user button. Wait a couple of seconds and then remove power. Remove the micro USB cable. BeagleBone Green should now have firmware flashed and is ready to place back on the board. Okay, so now we're ready to unplug it. Okay, now that we have the BeagleBone Green reflashed and it's unplugged, remember to take out the micro SD card. Now we're ready to put it back on the Acorn motherboard. When install BeagleBone Green back on the Acorn board, ensure that the pins are aligned correctly and not offset. Now let's go ahead and reseat it back on Acorn. Ethernet connector drops into the slot, and if you get everything lined up, without any force, the board will actually drop down on the header pins about halfway. Let's see if you can see that. 
I put a little light on it there. You can see it's about halfway on and front to back it's lined up. Let's look at the back side here. There you go, there you can see the pins. Let's look at this side. There you can see it. So it's all lined up. All right, then push firmly down about the middle and you'll feel it go straight down. And remember, make sure that SD card has been ejected. Power up the acorn board and you'll see the heartbeat light. Once a second flashing blue LED if Beagle Bone Green has successfully been debricked. So let's power it up. I'm going to tip it back so you can see the heartbeat light. We did our job right. There it is. Now you may see that, that heartbeat light flash like that. That's okay. After that, if you get the uh, one pulse per second, it should be fine. And that's what we're looking for. So the firmware was successfully flashed. Okay, now we're ready to connect it back to the Ethernet cable, hook it up to the computer, and uh, it says, now you can start CNC12 from the CNC PC. During this first boot, CNC12 will update the firmware on BeagleBone Green to match the CNC12 version automatically. Do not power off Acorn board during the updating of the firmware. Please use the latest CNC12 software on the CNC PC. And you can find that software the same place we've got the uh, debricking software and information. Okay, we're ready to start up Acorn. Now, uh, what I did is I powered down my acorn board and I powered down my PC. Then I powered up my acorn board first and then I powered up my PC and let it boot. My acorn ethernet LEDs, I have a solid yellow and the green is solid and blinking occasionally. So at this point we're ready to start the CNC software. It's going to go ahead and reflash and update the software in acorn again to the latest version. It's very important that you do not power down Acorn during this process or you'll be going through the debricking procedure all over again. This is what causes a lot of issues that people, when they first start CNC 12 mil, somehow Acorn gets powered down and you don't let the process finish. So let's go ahead and start CNC 12 mil now. It's initializing the MPU. There it is, it's already updating the software. MPU rebooting, do not power off Acorn. Don't do anything at this point, just wait. Be patient, let virtual control panel come up. And there we are. We successfully debricked the BeagleBone Green on Acorn. I hope you had success.